Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this lesson, I'm going to show you how you might take one of your games that you've finished coding and whiteboxing and turn it into a finished product. I recently finished coding another mini game for my Crypto Games app, and now all I have to do is make it look like a fun to play game. Now, before we get started, let me demo this mini game. Now, here you can see I have a platform with a capsule game object on top of it, and when I click the screen, I can then repeatedly click the screen which will increase the power meter on the left side of the screen. When the 10 second timer counts down, you can see my capsule then lifts off the ground and the speed of the capsule is relative to the power meter. I can then steer the capsule from left to right using A and D on the keyboard. And every once in a while, you can see a circle object spawn. And if I collide with the circle object, the meter on the right side of the screen will fill up. This meter is the fuel meter. Once this meter runs out, our capsule is then out of fuel and it stops moving up, falls down, and we get a game over. Now I'd say that there's three main points when it comes to polishing a game. There's probably more than that, but especially when it comes to smaller mini games like this, I'd say that there's three major steps. The first is replace with assets and animations. The next is fine tune. And the third is don't forget audio. Now for this video, I'm gonna be covering at least the first two steps, but I'll do other videos in the future covering these three steps in more detail. Now the concept behind this game is that the capsule is going to be a rocket and the circles are going to be coins that fuel our rocket. The point of the game is to get the highest score and the score is the distance traveled. Now the first and easiest thing that I can do to make my game more visually appealing is to replace the capsule object. This is what the player controls and it's the focal point of my game which is going to be a rocket. The name of this game is going to be To The Moon as you know, with cryptocurrency, people are always saying to the moon, and there's always memes of the doge dog going to the moon with Elon Musk giving his input. So to replace our capsule object with a rocket, one helpful tool that I highly recommend is the website called Sketchfab. I could just as easily model my own rocket, but many times you can find free assets on modeling websites like Sketchfab and even on the Unity Asset Store. So if I search something like rocket ship, you can see a bunch of options, and a lot of these you have to pay for, but every once in a while you'll find some free assets. And here's a good low poly free to download rocket ship. And when I download this rocket, I'm going to download the FBX version. Once I've finished downloading it, I want to open it up in Blender, because there's parts of this model that we don't need, namely the smoke trails. Once I have this open in Blender, the first thing I'm going to do is zero out the transform. And then in edit mode, I'll select all the smoke trails using L on the keyboard to select all the connected faces, and then I'll delete them. I'll then reposition the whole mesh so that the origin is at the base of the rocket. Once I've done this, I can then save this model directly into my Unity project. Inside Unity, I'm gonna click and drag our rocket FBX directly onto our rocket game object, which is our capsule. You can then see that this object has a scale of 100, and I'm just going to change that to one. But that makes our rocket a little too small, as you can see when it's compared to the capsule object. So with the FBX selected, I'm gonna change the scale factor to 1.5 and click apply. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change the background to be more like a cartoon sky. So I'll select my camera, I'll change the background type to a solid color, and I'll set it to a sky blue. Now for this game, I do like the concept of being able to see the perspective, so I'm going to leave my camera in perspective mode. But now we want to work on the ground platform. For this, I think I'm just going to extend a flat plane as the ground. I'll color it green, and then I'll create some sort of launch pad for the rocket to sit on. This way, we'll be able to see the rocket leaving the ground, and the ground won't immediately disappear as you'll be able to see it in the distance. All right, so we're gonna take a plane. I'm gonna make it child to an empty game object, and then I'll offset that plane in the Z direction. That way, as I scale up the parent empty game object, the plane will just grow in one direction. I'll then create a flat green material and I'll apply it to this plane, after which we can go back to Blender. And I'll open up a new file, after which I'll delete all the default objects. I'll create a new cylinder. In the Add Cylinder menu, I'll set the vertices to 16. I'll set the radius to 3 and the depth to 0.1. I'll then use the Object drop-down menu to select Shade Smooth. And in Edit Mode, I'll select the circumference of the platform. Go to the Edge drop-down menu and select Mark Sharp. I'll then select all the vertices, and with the top-down view, I'll go to UV and select Project from View. 
after which I'll select all the vertices inside the UV editor and we'll scale it up to fit the space. After which we'll go to the UV dropdown menu in the UV editor and select export UV layout. You can then save this file and we'll open it up in Photoshop. I'm then going to save my launch pad as an FBX inside my Unity project. In Photoshop, I want there to be an outline around the perimeter of our platform with black and yellow stripes. To do this, we can select the top half of our image with the marquee tool and then we'll fill it yellow. And then in the filter dropdown menu, we'll select distort and wave. In this window, I'll set the number generators to 371 and the wavelengths to a min of 36 and a max of 37. We can then click OK. This will turn our yellow area into a bunch of yellow stripes, after which we can go to filter, distort, and then polar coordinates. This will turn our yellow stripes into a radial pattern, after which I'll fill this circle with black. And then I'll make another smaller circle and I'll color this one gray. We can then hide the UV layer and I'll save this as a PNG in my Unity project. All right, inside Unity, let's go ahead and create a new material that we can apply this texture to. I'm gonna call this material launch pad. I'll then drag in the texture to the base map field and I'll set the smoothness value to zero. I'll then drag in my launch pad FBX to my scene and I'll place it just above the ground plane but below my rocket. You can see that this model is once again too big that's because its transform scale is set to 100, so I'll set it to 1. And then we can select our material and drag it onto the launch pad. I do want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'll select our launch pad FBX and I'll change the scale factor to 2. Now the next thing that I want to do for my minigame is add a flame behind the rocket. For this, I'm actually going to use the flame prefab that I already have for our coin drop minigame. This is the flame that's coming out the top of the building. So I'll find that prefab and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'll drag it over to my file system for this mini game. I'll then add it to my scene and I'll modify this prefab so that it works as a booster instead of an open flame. For this booster, I want it to be more like a welding torch where the flame particles get smaller and tighter together by the end of the particle instead of bigger and dissipating into smoke. I also want these flame particles to come out faster so I'll give it a starting speed and I'll remove the gravity modifier. With a couple more tweaks, here's what I have. Now I could probably do a little more. I could change the color, make it blue and not so smoky. But I think this looks good for now. And the last thing that I want to do for this particle system is I want to disable play on awake. This is because the particle system is not going to be running the whole time. We want it to start when the rocket blasts off and we want to stop it when the rocket runs out of fuel. So to do this, I'll open up my script. We need to first add a new variable and this is going to be a serialized field of type particle system and I'll call it fire. I then have this section of code which is when the game is in its lift off state. And in here we want to add an if statement where we're checking to see if our fire particle system is playing, but we want to make sure that it's false. So I'm going to add an exclamation mark in front. And if it's false, then we want to say fire.play. I'm then going to add another if statement around this if statement where we're checking to see if our fuel time is greater than zero. I'll then create an else statement where our fuel timer is less than or equal to zero. And in here we want to check to see if our fire particle system is playing and we want to check to see that it's true, in which case we'll say fire.stop. Inside Unity with my controller game object selected, I'll apply the particle system to our fire variable. And now when I test my game, you can see that when the rocket takes off, the fire particle system is activated. Now one thing that I think would be cool to add to the rocket is a spin when the rocket is moving from left to right and a slight tilt to point the rocket in each direction. Kind of like the heavy end effect in our Flappy Bird tutorial series. To do this, I'm gonna open up my script again and we'll add two new variables. These are both going to be of type transform. One is going to be for our pivot Y and the other is going to be for pivot Z. Then inside that same if statement where we're checking to see if the game state is lift off, after this line of code where I'm setting the X component of the current speed variable, I'm gonna use the pivot Y to spin my rocket ship. So I'll do pivot Y dot rotate and I'll pass in vector3.up and I'll multiply it by the current speed.x. On the next line of code, I'll use the pivot z to aim my rocket ship. And so it'll be pivot z.forward equals vector3.normalize. And we'll pass in a new vector3, which will be current speed.x, current speed.y, and a 1. 
This will make it so that the y-axis of this transform object will always be pointing towards the camera. Now inside Unity, I want to create an empty child object to my rocket object. And I want to rotate it so that the z-axis is pointing up and the y-axis is pointing back towards the camera. We'll then take our low poly rocket mesh and make it a child to this object. Now in the inspector with our controller object selected, we're going to set these pivots. So for the pivot Z, we want to set that to the parent empty object that we just created. And for the pivot Y, we want to set that to our low poly rocket object. And now when I test my game, you can see that the rocket spins and tilts in the direction I'm pointing. Now next up, I just want to set the sprite image for our fuel prefab. So I'll select my fuel prefab. And for this, I'm just using a sprite renderer. And so I'm going to change the sprite to my coin sprite. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the color of the meters depending on how full they are. And so in my script, I'll start off with my fuel gauge. And at the bottom of the same if statement where we're checking to see if the game state is lift off, I'll add a couple of if and else statements. The first one will be if our fuel gauge dot fill amount is greater than 0.75. If it is, then we want to set the fuel gauge dot color equal to color dot green. I'll then type an else if statement, and I'll check to see if the fuel gauge dot fill amount is greater than 0.5. If it is, then I'll say fuel gauge dot color is equal to yellow. I'll then have an else if statement to see if the fuel gauge dot fill amount is greater than 0.25. If it is, then we'll set the fuel gauge dot color equal to orange, but there isn't a color dot orange, so we'll have to make it. So we'll say new color, we'll pass in a one and then a 0.5 and a zero. And finally, we can have an else statement where we're checking to see if the fuel gauge is less than 0.25. If it is, then we want to set the fuel gauge dot color equal to red. So I'll say color dot red. Now setting the color of a fuel gauge like this will mean that the color changes by steps, or in other words, one second the fuel gauge will be green. And the very next frame when the fill amount drops below 0.5, the color will change to yellow. And so next I'm going to change the color of the power meter, and I want this meter to change over time between two colors, either blue for low power or red for high power. And this meter changes color as the player is clicking the screen during the countdown state of our game. So I'll scroll up to this if statement, where I'm checking to see if the state is equal to countdown, and we'll just add one line of code, which is powergauge.color, is equal to color.lerp, and we're lerping between blue and red. So I'll first pass in blue, which is color.blue, and then color.red, and the determining value will be the power gauge.fill amount. This means that the closer the fill amount gets to zero, the color will be blue, and the closer the fill amount gets to one, the color will be red. And in between, I'm guessing the meter will be a purple. So now I'll save this script, I'll go back to Unity, now when I test my game, you can see that as I'm clicking the screen, the power meter fills and it's no longer green, it's either blue, or as the power gets more and more, it turns red. And when our rocket takes off and our fuel gauge begins to empty, you can see that it changes from a green, to a yellow, to an orange, to a red. Now the last thing that I want to do for this video is I want to change the color of the background or the sky, depending on how far or how high the player gets. For this, we'll add two more color variables. The first I'll call sky blue, and the other I'll call space. And the reason why I'm doing all this is because I want the sky to get darker as they get higher. Now hopefully I'll be able to make it look like the rocket is leaving the atmosphere and going to outer space. Now in our liftoff state, here I have this distance variable, and we're going to use this distance variable to change the color of the background. And so after I set this distance variable by measuring the distance between the rocket and the ground game object, I'm going to type camera.main.backgroundcolor, and I'm gonna set it equal to color.lerp. The first value is going to be our blue sky, the second is going to be space, and the determining value is going to be distance divided by a thousand. So I'm gonna say once the player reaches a thousand, the sky should be the space color. But before that, it'll be somewhere between sky blue and space. And so now I'll save this, I'll go back to Unity, and I just need to set these color values. So I'll set the sky blue to the same color that I already have, and then I'll just leave the space color as black. Now when I test my game and our rocket launches off, you can see that the higher my rocket goes, the darker the background gets. 
Now that's everything I'm going to cover in this demo tutorial on how to take a finished coded white box game and turn it into a polished ready to publish game. Now of course there's more that I could do for this game. I could add audio, I could add a particle effect when the player picks up the coins. I could add little trees or objects on the ground level so that you can see them get smaller and smaller as the rocket flies away. But I'll save all of that for the next video. And of course, every game is going to require different amounts of polishing. Some games don't require any art at all, while others require far more. But for the most part, the concepts behind polishing a game are the same. Now let's go over those three steps one more time. Replace with assets and animations, fine tune, and don't forget audio. Now if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you can be up to date whenever I publish new videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.